Oh, hey, it's recording. So, what did you know about black people before moving to America? Nothing at all. I never met any black person mm -hmm. while I lived in my country, which was Peru, South America. I met my first black person here in the USA. Mm -hmm. Um, what did you, like, what shows or movies or what media included black people in your country before? Um, nothing other than there was a chocolate mm -hmm. that was called Doña Pepa. Mm -hmm. It was like Aunt Jemima. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much she looked just like her, but it was mm -hmm. a chocolate. And also the soccer games were very big in my country, and there was a uh, a couple of players that were mm -hmm. black and but I never saw the color I never mm -hmm. because I never knew any anyone black so it, it it wasn't like a shocker or anything like that did you notice any prejudice towards black people in your country or were or was um, it just because there's low population nobody really talked about it no one ever actually they love our soccer players that were black i mean they mm -hmm. never saw them as oh my god they're black no right. never never okay. just of how good they were um did you learn about most american culture by media in your country yes mm -hmm. i sure did actually everything was mostly like uh, um shows on tv that um you know back in my time were like I Love Jeannie mm -hmm. or Bewitched, you know, those, oh, the Flintstones, right. those kind of shows they showed in my country. And mm -hmm. of course they were translated. Right. And then of course in the big screen, we had Grease mm -hmm. and other American movies that were of course, you know, translated in mm -hmm. um, Spanish. Um, how did American American news, movies, TV shows, and music impact your feelings towards Black people when you moved to America? Actually, I love the music. Mm -hmm. I it was very happy and and I really it was so good to dance to. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a teenager when mm -hmm. I moved to the um, USA. I was fourteen years old, and I was um, my freshman year in high school. Mm -hmm. and and I was exposed to a lot of um, black people mm -hmm. and their music and their culture and the way they interacted. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was all I saw was happy people. So from your perception, like watching the TV shows, there were no like negative like connotations that you got from black people in the media? Um, there were, in my country, there was none. In, here in the U.S., mm -hmm. I started learning that as I um, s spent more time in the U.S., mm -hmm. that um, they were not just being prejudiced to them, but mm -hmm. also to Spanish people, because I'm Spanish. Right. And they, I started realizing that I was not the same as everybody else, right. no matter if, you, if I was with the black kids or if I was with the white kids or the Asian kids, mm -hmm. I was not the same. Everything was so, they got along, mm -hmm. but they, you were not them. Right. So what was the difference between um, the American TV shows and uh, the Peruvian TV shows and like um, if there was any representation of black people when you came to America? I, I did notice that there was some kind of a difference, like um, they will give um, a, only certain times the black shows, like the mm -hmm. Crosby show and other black shows on, on certain times, mm -hmm. and um, the other shows were like the hot times, you know, that they have those special oh, most people watch show it. times, mm -hmm. yeah, show times, and, and um, they black shows were not in the show time, so to speak, oh, okay. where in times where either you were in school or you, you know, it was. Right. So uh, they didn't air them when everyone was watching, when came home. Right, or, like you wouldn't watch it on Friday nights or, right. you know, Saturdays, you know, because they had other shows, not right. the black shows. So. Um, did you find out about black struggles by American media or the black community around you? Actually, the media. 
Mm -hmm. I started not around me because there, even though I was in the U.S., mm -hmm. in where I lived, there was not many around me, mm -hmm. still only in school. Right. So mostly I learned through the media, the mm -hmm. news. It's always uh, the Black people were the bad ones right. uh, getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so that made me feel a little bit like, wow, I never knew that. So my perspective for watching the news in a, such a young age and not being mm -hmm. exposed to a lot of Black people growing up, right. it was that Black people were bad. Mm -hmm. Most of them, you know, right. that's what it came to my mind, believing. Yeah, that's what you know. Um, Was there a lot of Black representation on TV when you were growing up? Or if not, when did you see a shift? Um, only when it came to uh, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, holiday. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only time really that they will speak about the black culture and what they went through and stuff like that in school, but mm -hmm. not in a daily basis. Right. No. Um, so did, has it gone, do you think black re representation has gotten better over this, the years? Definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yes. Now, finally people are being judged by their character, mm -hmm. not, but where they come from or their color of their skin. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of changes in that. Right. And I like that. So do you feel like um, the media is portraying black people as more of like one, like a full dimensional people now instead of just violent? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now I see more of them showing more of the person that they are mm -hmm. versus what they did wrong all the right. time you know they would just show what they did wrong in the news you know they got caught stealing or robbing or killing versus what a good person they are you know not it's in every kind right right so i learned that now in days now they talk good about certain people and yes and, and they're black and that's a good thing you mm -hmm. know because yeah they're good people too you know right. So yeah, I like that change. Um, so do you believe that people adopt beliefs by what we see in the media? Yes, mm -hmm. because um, especially when you're young, mm -hmm. um, that's all you see and that's what you believe, right. right? Of course, you got your parents also that will tell you, no, that's right or wrong, but what kid goes to the parent and ask those kind of questions? Right. You, know? you usually go by what you see in the social media nowadays or what you see on tv right mm -hmm. and then you start believing those things without really getting the facts so what do you think uh, we all can do to us uh, um assess like our thinking of um stereotypes and trying to break them down i think now that everybody knows that everybody should be judged as their person mm -hmm. regardless of what color you are mm -hmm. i think now the new generation has a lot of uh, um, if they have any doubts or anything of course talk to a teacher talk to a parent mm -hmm. don't keep it to yourself and make your own assumptions mm -hmm. of um, what should be or shouldn't be um, and, and just have, have always an open mind because mm -hmm. we are all humans regardless right. so um, do you think that surrounding ourselves by Black communities, we will actually understand Black struggles and what they go through? I believe so, mm -hmm. honestly. I think that the more you encounter and embrace Black people in mm -hmm. your community, in your lives, the more you'll get to know them and see how they're no different than Spanish people, no different than white person, no different than other other culture people. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that will be something good to think about. Yeah, it should be very diverse. Okay. Thanks, mom. You're welcome, baby. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Have you seen recurring black stereotypes in movies and TV shows? Most definitely. Um, what character tropes have you noticed? Um, so, 
definitely a lot of times they portray um, black women as being like very loud or being aggressive, especially when they don't get their way. Um, a lot of times too, um, like black males are portrayed as like dangerous or criminals or like things like that, that are very heavily used when, yeah, as I say, that's just what I've seen. Um, did you adopt any of those ideals? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, why don't you think you, why, why don't you think that you did? I think a lot of it, um, came from the fact that when, uh, I was growing up, you know, I had a lot of friends that, um, you know, that were black, you know, I've had friends of, you know, different races, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously when I hung out with them, they weren't like that, you know, right. so like to see it on TV, it was kind of silly because mm -hmm. it was like, you could tell that it's over exaggerated. Like, it's mm -hmm. just, it's silly to look at because you know that the people that you're around are not really like that. Um, so you think that your environment and being surrounded by black communities contributed to understanding black struggles? Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, seeing like my friends and, and seeing like their hardships, um, you know, with uh, even so much as like, you know, being looked at a certain way, like in, in public, uh, even mm -hmm. uh, in even growing up um, through like with my adult friends, um, you know, seeing opportunities go by them because, you know, people have like a, a certain ideal about, you know, what kind of person that they are, but they don't even get the chance to like really know them. It's just all a bit silly. So you guys had like open discussions about what they went through and... Oh, definitely. I'm like, because, you know, a lot of times, I mean, like you can tell they're, they're visibly upset. Like it's, right. it's a lack of opportunity. It's a lack of like an effort to even allow, you know, them to express themselves. And, um, and of course, like, you know, they, they voice, voice their sadness basically. Right. So do you think media is, um, actually portraying black struggles like, um, realistically or, do you think it's doing more harm harm than um, uplifting Black people? So I'll say both. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll say it in this way. Um, definitely social media uh, has done a lot to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. I think about what the media is doing like on the television or like things that you see in the news or on TV or in movies like you see this negative portrayal all the time yeah. that just keeps cycling around. But then, you know, I get on social media and things like Twitter and mm -hmm. I see people that completely flip it around and they're like, but look at this versus this, you know, mm -hmm. especially like with a lot of cases of like, um, you know, a lot of, you know, like uh, during Black Lives Matter and, and stuff, they were talking about like protesting, you know, for the lives that were lost over ridiculousness when there are people that are white that are doing worse things, right. like uh, what's his name, Dylan Roof, mm -hmm. and then they took him to go get a burger. Are you kidding? Right. <laughs> it's stuff like that, you know, so right. when you see it on the TV, you're like, oh, wow, that's really awful. They killed a bunch of people. But then like, that's it. Or a lot of times they don't even get to like hear like an explanation because a lot of times uh, those individuals, because they're black, they are killed. Do you think um, social media is better at portraying black struggles because there's more like black people dominating those and they're not um, filtered or yeah. um, uh, silenced? Yeah, I think that that's a big thing that contributes, uh, you know, to a lot of it. I mean, like, look at your TV broadcasting, like Fox News. That's yeah. my favorite one, <laughs> you know, because a lot of the even the news anchors that you see on there is a heavily white crew that's right. there. So, of course, you can tell it's like by looking at it at glance, if you're even remotely open to the idea that maybe they're portraying something wrong, you can see a very big difference between what's being said on there versus what's being said on, you know, things like Twitter, where mm -hmm. really it is, you know, a, a, you know, a big chunk of, you know, people that use Twitter are black. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you think we all can be actively anti-racist and overcome our prejudice influences? Um, so <laughs> I think that one of the biggest things is acknowledging Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's a lot of ignorance 
uh, you know, or people that uh, have like passive ignorance. It's like, they're just like, well, you know, maybe there's a problem, but then they don't want to understand that passing it by is part of the problem when you see something you know it's like the bystander rule you see something you say something you know what i mean i'm like so if you see that there's an injustice being done why aren't you saying anything you're contributing to the problem and i think that that accountability i guess is the bottom line that would come down to it accountability on all parts to be very transparent with the things that are being seen or being said or things that are being reported why is it so heavily that black people are being, I guess, chastised on the news, you know, for doing crimes. And then at the same time, you're not seeing anybody else. Right. So it it all boils down to accountability, what's right and what's wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that if people were to self-reflect on themselves a little bit, then maybe they, they would get it together. But that's very hard to to get people to do. Nice. Thanks, love. Okay. Okay, it's recording. (laughs) Okay. Do you think colorism impacts people's perception of you? Of me? I wouldn't say, like, in a big way because of where I live. So I feel like because I live in Covington, it's a pretty small town. So like, it's not a lot of opportunities out here that would cause colors people to discriminate against me. But I do know that like being in theater and things like that, like there have been times where like I auditioned for a part and because on Broadway, like the part would be like a, a light skinned girl with like curly hair, I would be denied the part because look wise, I didn't fit it or I would get the part and I would be requested to like alternate my appearance to fit what the person like looks like. So mm-hmm. I definitely think that people perceive me differently because maybe they want me to alternate who I am to fit like the quota of what the lighter skinned girl may be. But uh, I don't really think I've experienced a lot of colorism be- just because, like, my area. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think colorism influences the Black stereotypes we see today? I think that it. I think because, like, the dark-skinned woman, which is, like, one of, like, the biggest discussions right now in colorism, mm-hmm. I think the dark-skinned woman who has been labeled as masculine and mm-hmm. uglier and things like that, because she's been labeled as that, it's harder for, like, a lot of, like, darker-skinned girls to, like, basically find, like, their beauty standard, and I think it influences a lot of the stereotypes because then it comes in like when people call you know black people monkeys and things like that and then when you think about things like blackface which blackface using black paint which can also be correlated with a black woman a darker black woman and so I think in a lot of you know situations um it the stereotypes discriminate against darker skinned women and then it's like so it's harder for them in the media to be able to find what beauty is because they are represented um how do you think the under representation of dark skin actors affect um the media and how people portray black stereotypes well i definitely think because they're underrepresented the stereotypes are so strong and we don't really have a lot of movies where like the darker skinned people are like successful like when we think about the when we think about the darker skinned people in the movies like Tyler Perry movies Mm -hmm. there's like Emma Diaz like Diary of a Black Woman like the the dark guy he's like the guy that beat his wife and cheat on his wife and he was the bad guy and right. then there was this lighter skin guy that came to save the day and he was like I love you and I want to be with you and so it's kind of like because the lighter skin guy was portrayed as better than in society we look at lighter skin guys as better than darker skin guys right. and so because in in Hollywood 
you know, darker women are portrayed differently because they're portrayed as more masculine. They're always like the tomboy or they're, always, you know, they're never really like shown in like nice dresses with makeup and their hair done. Like they're always like just pretty rug ruggish and like they look like kind of raggedy and the lighter skin girls always done up. And so because they're not represented the right way, it affects younger generations because then they fall under that stereotype because they don't really, their, their color is not portrayed as beautiful or handsome. And so they don't really understand where they fit because in Hollywood, when they're cast, you know, even like in books, like the book will say that it's supposed to be a darker skinned person. Like the hate you give is supposed to be a darker right. skinned person, but it was portrayed as a lighter skinned person. And mm -hmm. so then it just makes people think, well, and you know, in it are lighter skinned people better. And so right. that's kind of why, that's kind of why Hollywood really needs to fix, you know, how they're portraying darker skinned people and why we need movies where the darker skinned people are successful and they're, you know, they're actually doing something rag rather than being like a supporting character. Right. Um, so do you believe that media plays a big role in colorism and underrepresentation of dark skinned actors and actresses? I definitely do think the media plays the biggest part in the underrepresentation of darker skinned people. I definitely think that um, it's just been going on for so long that sometimes the people who make the post and the people who make the decisions and like Hollywood and you know in big industries and like modeling per se they don't even really realize what they're doing because for generations you know um like colorism has been you know the lighter skin person being the model and the white women the lighter like this tall skinny Zendaya type looking person right. and so it's kind of like um I think that the media is the biggest part because that's what a lot of people have access to and what a lot of hateful people have access to and so because so many hateful people have access to them to these like Instagram Twitter and things like that then they push the stereotypes because they say yeah you know dark skin people are ugly and then like and then it's like so then they just go off on these tangents and comment sections retweets subtitles and all the things like that and then it's kind of like uh because of that that's why it keeps going on it's like it's like never ending cycle because one person will pick a trend and just run with it right um, so what are your feelings on um, non-Black people believing that colorism it, is rooted in just the Black community instead of white supremacy? Well, I, I definitely think that when I think about people who are non-Black, I think, well, you know, they never experienced it. So it's out of their right. pure ignorance, which is why they say that. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think that that's why, that's why a lot of non-Black people say things like the only people who think racism is real is black people because they want to be oppressed or you know right. racism doesn't exist anymore black people just want to feel like you know they are the lowest of the low and things like that so I think it's because of their pure ignorance that they have never experienced what it's like because right. like white people don't come in all different shades and right. they don't come in all different you know different skin tones they all look the same and so right. it's like because they're made and that's why like when you think about people who are like albino they're immediately like subjected to being white but they're actually black and right. so I think when like a lot of non-black people say, you know, well, colorism is rooted in the black community, it's only, well, nah, not really, because then you think about like who runs Hollywood, like it's a right. lot of white people who are out here being directors and things like that. And so it's like, so really it's rooted in the oppressor and that's why it just continues to happen. That's why it's a vicious cycle. Right, because when I was researching, um, it was, it's basically just like when they were, um, rape, raping and enslaved people, you know, and um, right. right. light-skinned people because then they would believe that, you know, the less black that they look is, is they're more desirable. Right, so, and that's definitely what happens because in, in those days, there were literal studies that showed that slave masters continued to have babies with slaves to lighten up what was coming so that the lighter people would, would keep coming and things like that. So that way it will go from being super black 
to being like almost barely being able to tell that you're black because generations ago that slave master raped this woman and then that's why you look the way that you look right so what do you think are some um solutions or how we can assess our thinking of colorism and the uh, underrepresentation of um dark skinned black people i think that like now how a lot of like darker skinned models are starting to become more public in the media i think that we need to make these women the cover of the magazines and make these women the superstars of the movies and put them on you know make them go viral on tiktok instead of people like charlie right. d'amelio and all like like we have to we have to make them viral we have to like we have to actually push for them and vouch for them and root for them and i definitely think that you know we have to stop subjecting to the lighter skin woman and and give darker skin women a chance in all environments you know even things like broadcasting like you rarely see a darker skin woman like on the news or things like that we have to put them on all platforms right for people to actually say they're no different you know because then it's like they're no different in the modeling world or they're no different in hollywood or they're no different in broadcasting they're no different as a whole so as a solution we have to be able to put them in all different environments so that way non-black people could be able to see even black people could be able to see that darker skinned people are just as capable of doing something as a lighter skinned man or as a lighter skinned woman right okay well that's all my questions for you i'm so happy when movies about black struggles are released can you tell if there are only white people behind the scenes such as producers screenwriters or directors um yes how does it affect the plot or dialogue um the plot it'll usually be like something basic like um like police brutality like racism like mm -hmm. in school and like they'll use like language like that no one uses in the black community at all or, or like really old slang and it just sounds like unnatural and unreal right so um, you think that um, usually white directors or screenwriters don't encapture like how um, black youth or um, black adults actually talk or interact with each other? Right, they use like, they use like a lot of slang or like, um, and they like try to make something like, we don't pronounce our words like, you know, Mm -hmm. like correctly at all like it's very hard to understand and it's like a forced black scent right do you think the white savior complex influences non-poc's ignorance of racism or their microaggressions um yeah because like white people like for example in hgf like the the girl's like boyfriend was white and you know, just because he was dating her, like, and he listened to, like, rap music and stuff, like, people was like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, you know, our savior, our king, or whatever, right. and, you know, he was, like, getting praised for, like, doing the bare minimum, like, just, like, you know, dating a black girl at the beginning right. of the movie, so. So, you think certain types of media um, influences white people to think that they're, um, like, activists um and working as hard as they can to fight injustice can you repeat that um so you think media portrays um media influences white people to think that they're doing so much for the black community when really they're just doing the bare minimum and not really um changing anything right i yeah i do think that like they just they just think you know just by knowing a black person and not being um racist towards them or like if someone says like something racist to the black person they're like hey um that wasn't cool like they right. think they're like they're so high and mighty like they're like this social justice warrior right and they're not um how do you think the entertainment industry can improve on its diversity of screenwriters directors and producers i mean well you just have to like honestly i think that we should like just tell black youth that it's okay, you know, to fall. 
follow your dreams and stuff, you know, go to school, for, like what you want. And I think like that'll really improve like, you know, the diversity um, of like screenwriters and directors and stuff. Right, so basically incorporate like music programs or or directing programs into their schooling or stuff like that. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's your perspective on black stereotypes that we see today? Um, most of the black stereotypes that we see today have like have been created like um years ago, you know, to show like um you know to put us like in a negative light. Like for example, like if you go back and watch like the old minstrels, like what you can find on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, like it's like a, a white person portraying a black person like being lazy or like you know um over sexualizing women and. Mm -hmm you know, just doing, like, things, like, no one wants, you know? Right. And it's, like, created to, like, you know, scare white people, like, shy white people away. And, and other races, too, you know, from right. um wanting to be around us. And, like, you know, they, like, portray us as, like, um savages, like, savages, quote, unquote. Mm -hmm. And, you know, make people fear us. Right. It's, like, not even how we act. So how do you think that um, impressionable minds can expand their perspective before they start buying into those stereotypes that they see? I mean, people, I, I think like whenever people see like another person, like they automatically think of the stereotypes. And before, mm -hmm. like, I think you just need to like get to know the person, you know, and not stereotype at all, like just like get to know the person instead of like, right automatically like trying to assume who they are right so you think people should just um just befriend you know black communities and be involved in them so they won't so they know the truth about black people right and also not every black person is the same so like you know like the stereotypes and stuff or like what you hear is like it's not going to be correct Right. So um, how do you think media can incorporate full dimensional black characters? I mean, by realizing, you know, that we have lives, like our lives like aren't just about struggle, you know, mm -hmm. like that's all that, you know, the media like tells is like, you know, black struggle, like the person being killed by the police. And all that kind of stuff, like, at the same time, you have to understand, like, we, we um, have regular everyday lives. Like, we go to school just like everyone else. We 